Listen to verse 23 as the story continues. When he came and saw the grace of God, now Barnabas is coming to Antioch. The church sends Barnabas up there to see what God's doing because they've heard about it. Barnabas now comes the 300 miles to Antioch and God's word says, when Barnabas came and he saw the grace of God, remember that phrase, he saw the grace of God, he was glad and he exhorted them all to remain faithful, faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. Oh, what another pregnant verse. We could literally spend weeks on this one verse. Listen to what he says. When he came and saw the grace of God. Friends, grace is invisible. Right? If I asked you technically, can you see grace? Can you hold grace? Well, in a very real sense, you'd have to say, well, well no, it's an intangible. But let me tell you, while grace may be invisible, the fruit of grace is more than visible. It's felt. It has an undeniable presence. Barnabas comes and he sees an undeniable expression of God's grace at work in these people. And I say to you again, look around. Whether it's in the person of the saved soul next to you or if it's in the active engagement of what God is doing, aligning things that are miraculously, perfectly fit in our context. I mean, it's undeniable what God is doing. If you are willing to look, and if you want to look, you will see the grace of God in this church family. I heard recently somebody said, do you think the Holy Spirit is still in there? Let me just tell you, that's somebody who's intentionally trying to divide and tear apart this body. Because you cannot, with any honesty or integrity or eyes of God, look into what is happening here and question whether or not. That's an intentional attempt to rationalize and justify a very evil and divisive thing. God is alive here. And just like you see here in Acts 11 in the church at Antioch, it's undeniable. You walk in and you look at what God is doing and you can't do anything but spiritually jaw drop. And to say otherwise is to be a liar or one with an other set of motives or intent. Oh, I pray that you see this. One of the greatest blessings we have is the known presence of God in our midst. It's the known power of God in what we're doing. You see, we're not doing anything. We're sock puppets. It's the hand and the power of God in us that is doing everything. That's what Barnabas sees. He says, whoa, this, this is God at work. This is awesome. And he said it gave him joy. And I ask you, what gives you joy? Is it getting your way? Is it getting what you want? Or does your joy come when you realize that what you want is what God wants? Does your joy come when you realize that you're an instrument in his grace? That you're an application of his love upon others? Barnabas had great joy because he could see God at work. Now, he's tearing down traditions. He's, he's tearing down paradigms. Barnabas is thinking, oh boy, the guys back home aren't going to like this. But man, is this beautiful to see what God's doing. You see, the children of God... Those who are in the family of God, when daddy says this is something new, you know what they say? Okay, dad, thank you. The rogue, those who may want the benefits of being in the family but will not surrender to the love and the authority of dad, you know what they do? They say, uh-uh, no. No, or, or, well, that's not the way we used to do it. And I don't know about you, but I know my dad well enough, my heavenly father. He doesn't take talking back. And he doesn't negotiate. He doesn't haggle. And sometimes you can get some kids that are spoiled brats. And I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. There are a few. You don't want to be a spoiled spiritual brat. When dad says so, that settles it. And he need not explain or justify to you or to me. And here's the best thing. If you know dad and you love dad, you know it's all good. So where and when we defy him and deny him, 
it's really a telltale sign of some really devilish things going on inside. It's a time to repent. It's a time to ask for forgiveness. The beautiful thing is, he says, if you mean it, he will. All you have to do is come broken and seek healing. And he will miraculously do that. Anything else, however, not going to end well. And here again, as ambassadors, truth and love, this is our message. This is what we bring forward. This is what you see in the Antioch church. How do I know? Because it says after Barnabas came... He saw grace in action, and it gave him joy. It says, then he immediately exhorted them. You know what that means? That means he got up in their grill. That means he went to them and said, listen now, don't you ever take this for granted. Don't you start talking about or treating his grace as this cheap thing. You stay the course. Be the real deal. He says he exhorted them to remain faithful. You don't get a one-and-done deal with this family. If you're in the family, you live as family. That means dad is dad and brothers and sisters are brothers and sisters. And where and when somebody, anybody, starts to try to hurt the family, you protect the family. You live like a family. And he says, not only do you remain faithful, but with steadfast purpose. I ask you, friends, what's your purpose? What's your individual purpose in life? Now, if dad is your dad, if you're in the family of God, I can tell you your purpose. Your purpose is to glorify God by making disciples who will make disciples who will make disciples who glorify God by making disciples who will make disciples who will make disciples, disciples, doing it locally, regionally, and globally. That's our purpose. God said so. Dad has told us. This This is the family plan. This is who we are, this is what we do. If that's unacceptable, then you need to check your bloodline. You need to do a DNA test. Because if you don't want to bring glory to God by making disciples and being his witness, you may not be in the family. If you are in the family, then good news. Here's where the lights come on. Because he's not going to adopt you and not equip you. He's not going to adopt anybody and leave them in the dark. If you've been saved by grace, you've been sent for grace. This is the plan of God. How does he do it? He has the church come together for the purpose of worshiping and refining, equipping, so that we can go out and be his ambassadors. This is what you see. Barnabas comes, and again, basically, he inspects, says, amen, it's the real deal, informs, pours in, and then he inspires by saying, this is all for the glory of God. Let's go multiply as missionaries. In verse 24, it says, for he was a good man. We see now the character of Barnabas. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. I just ask you, friends, be one that the Lord can and will use. Listen to this quote in regards to spiritual leadership. The key to helping people stay close to Christ is the Christian character of the leader. This is in keeping with what Paul gives as the qualifications for leaders in the church. Out of a long list that he gives in 1 Timothy 3, verses 2 through 7, only one element has to do with an ability. It's the ability to teach. The rest of the attributes are about the maturity character and reputation of a leader there are many things that we can do in ministry without godliness and the fulfillness fulfillingness of the spirit we could lead meetings we could prepare and deliver sermons we could organize and implement programs we could head committees but we cannot help people abide in the lord to produce godly people we too must be godly to produce people of prayer we too must be people of prayer to produce people who walk close to god we too must walk close to god you see you can't lead people where you yourself will not go nobody behind you will become anything that's still yet in front of you barnabas was a man that was good, his character. He was the kind of person when nobody was looking that was the same when the lights were on. 
Friends, if you know somebody who's very different in the dark, watch out. If who they are sometimes is inconsistent with who they claim to be all the time, watch out. Barnabas gives us the example of being the real deal. Let us be people whose walk and talk are consistent. Here you see again the characteristics of the church. They are an exhorted people. They're a persevering people. They're a faithful people. They're a committed people. They're a missional people. They are full of the Holy Spirit. That's what we see about Barnabas. He's filled with the Spirit. He's also filled with faith. Are you faithful? Are you growing? I promise you as a body, we are filled with the Spirit. I promise you that as a body, we are living faithfully. I promise you that we are growing. Growing in the ways that will show up in the kingdom. I ask you, is that what you want? I pray to God that it is.